untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-white control deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, built around the alternate win condition of Sinner's Judgment. We can first play Faithbound Judge for 3 mana, a 4-4 Spirit Soldier with Defender, Flying and Vigilance, and at the beginning of our upkeep we can put a Judgment counter on it, and as soon as it has 3 or more Judgment counters on it, it can attack as though it didn't have Defender. Then once it ends up in our graveyard, we can disturb it for 7 mana, in which case it turns into Sinner's Judgment, an enchantment or a curse that will enchant our opponent, and then at the beginning of our upkeep, we can put a Judgment counter on Sinner's Judgment, and then if there are 3 or more Judgment counters on it, the enchanted player loses the game. So a very interesting alternate win condition that requires us to survive for 3 turns, which is quite doable when you're playing a blue-white control deck with 4 copies of a Doomscar in the main deck to destroy all creatures, can also be foretold so we can put it in exile for 2 mana and cast it for 3 mana later as well as two copies of a Devastating Mastery. Now we do have to be a little bit careful not to cast the Devastating Mastery once we have Sinner's Judgment in play, because this will destroy all non-land permanents, including our enchantment, but it's going to be a nice way to reset the board early on and potentially get rid of additional permanents like Planeswalkers or artifacts like Asika's Chariot if we cast it for 6 mana. can also cast it for 4 mana instead, in which case an opponent chooses up to 2 non-land permanents they control and return them to their hand. So those are the sweepers in the deck. Then we also have the full play set of Fading Hope as a cheap bound spell returning target creature to its owner's hand. If mana value was 3 or less we also get to scry 1. And another interactive spell here is Divide by Zero, which can return target spell or permanent with mana value 1 or greater to its owner's hand, so it can use it as a pseudo counter spell or as a bound spell, and it also allows us to learn, grabbing one of our seven sideboard lessons in Best of One, including two copies of Environmental Sciences to gain two life and find a basic land, get reduced to memory as removal, turning a permanent into a 3-2 red and white spirit creature token, two copies of Teachings of the Archaics as card draw, and two copies of Mascot Exhibition generating a bunch of creature tokens that can also help us close out the game if we don't get there with the Sinner's Judgment. And then we also have two copies of Hall of the Storm Giants as a nice creature land, turning into a 7-7 giant creature with Ward 3 that can also help us close out the game. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we've got Fateful Absence as a 2-mana spot removal spell destroying a creature or planeswalker, but its controller gets to investigate, making a clue token they can sacrifice for 2-mana to draw a card. Although if we can wipe it away with a Devastating Mastery, we don't necessarily have to give the opponent the extra card. Then we also have the full playset of Sunset Revelry, which is a nice catch-up mechanism. If an opponent has more life than us, we get to gain 4 life. If an opponent controls more creatures than we do, we get to make a pair of 1-1 white human creature tokens. And if an opponent has more cards in hand, we also get to draw a card. So usually if we get to use 2 of the 3 modes, it's going to be a pretty powerful effect. Then we also have two copies of Jory Disruption as a counterspell, unless the opponent pays 1 mana, can also be used as a tap land. And then two copies of Faithful Mending lets us gain two life, draw two cards, and then discard two cards, and we can also flash it back out of the graveyard. So this is a nice way to potentially put the Faithbound Judge in our graveyard, so we can immediately cast Sinner's Judgment without having to go through the creature first. And then we also have two copies of Skyclave Relic as an artifact that's indestructible and can tap to add one man of any color. So a nice way to ramp into our more expensive cards. And being indestructible means it survives our devastating mastery. Can also kick it for three additional mana, in which case we also create two tapped tokens that are copies of Skyclave Relic, adding a total of three mana. And all that mana is going to be very important when casting Memory Deluge, which lets us look at the top X cards of our library, where X is the amount of mana spent to cast it, and then we get to put two of them into our hand and the rest on the bottom. But we can also flash it back for seven mana, in which case we'll get to look at the top seven cards instead of the top four. So a great way to find our Faithbound Judge if we don't have one already, and find more interaction like our various sweepers if we need to stay alive. And then our mana base has 26 lands in addition to our two copies of Jory Disruption, with six basic planes, four basic islands, or two creature lands, and then a whole host of dual lands with Deserted Beach times four, two copies of Glacial Floodplain, which enters battlefield tapped, and there are four copies of the Blue-White Pathway, as well as four copies of Field of Ruin, which is very important to deal with opposing creature lands. 
So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Probably going to foretell Doomscar on 2, Relic on 3, and then hang on to Faithful Mending until we have a better idea which cards we actually need in the matchup. Alright, opponent on a white aggro deck, so Doomscar is going to be quite good, and so is Sunset Revelry. Card we don't want to see is Thalia. And there's Thalia. So, going to make it a little bit more difficult here to leverage more expensive cards now. But Sunset Revelry still looks quite good, we'll get all three effects basically. And that buys time until we can set up a Doom Scar to wipe the board. And Elite Spellbinder won't be able to exile the Doom Scar, which is safely in exile thanks to Foretell. They do see the rest of my hand. And our opponent gets rid of the Skyclave Relic. So we could chump and then pull the trigger on Doom Scar next turn. Otherwise, I'm going to be taking a bunch of damage from Spellbinder. Feels a little bit early, maybe, to cast Doomscar, which is my only interaction at the moment. But I guess I'm still okay chumping to save two damage. And then next turn we can decide what to do next. So maybe I don't have to Doomscar just yet, and I can wait an extra turn. See if they want to commit an extra creature to the board. Opponent doesn't know for a fact that Doomscar is the foretold card. Could also be an Alrun's Epiphany in their mind. So they might still play an extra creature. Or if they really suspect Doomscar, they might just activate Haven, Portable Hole for 2 mana, gets rid of my token so they can attack for 7. Alright, so probably gonna pull the trigger on Doomscar next turn. Then the question becomes... Do I want to cast a Faithful Mending right now? And I don't think I have to, because I'm happy with the lands, I'm happy keeping the Devastating Mastery. So we'll wait. Field of Ruin is an excellent draw. So that can deal with the Faceless Haven, but for now still going to Doomscar. And then next turn, can maybe play a Skyclave Relic, we'll see. Brutal Cathar, just a 2-2 creature here, not too threatening. And then... Yeah, I'm tempted to cast a Skyclave Relic, even though I can't kick it. It's gonna be 8 mana before I can, so that's gonna be pretty pricey. So I'll play Relic to keep it daytime, and then I can still decide to cast Faithful Mending. So this game's not going to be over anytime soon. We do have a Hall of the Storm Giants, which could maybe pressure them. As our opponent gets in with Haven, so we take six. Yeah, I'm probably okay casting Faithful Mending here. Alright, happy to see Deluge. Do I keep both copies of Devastating Mastery is a question. I don't think I do. Would rather have the land. And then we've got Deluge and Field of Ruin plus Hall of the Storm Giants, which could block. So this seems fine. Don't think it matters too much, blue or white. So I'll pass. And then we've got Hall to block, so they don't really have any great attacks. And then we can end of turn. Maybe use Field of Ruin on a Haven plus Deluge, or we can keep Field of Ruin until they actually attack with the Haven. So at 11 life, we're still in a decent spot, I would say. It's going to be an Intrepid Adversary. Opponent saw us discard Devastating Mastery, so they might think we don't have another Sweeper in hand. So let's see if they want to attack. But there's a Hall to block, so wouldn't be a very good attack but I guess it would prevent me from casting Memory Deluge. 
So your opponent passes, and I can even deluge twice. Thanks to the Skyclave Relic. Definitely one Doomscar. And then could take the Sinner's Judgment already. I think I need to take more interaction first and then maybe find a Sinner's Judgment later to end the game once things are a little bit more stable. And then I guess we'll take the Disruption plus a land. Okay, so I can play a land. Do I feel the need to Doomscar right now? Not really, but I could foretell the Doomscar right now. And then pass, still keeping up all of the Storm Giants, but I could also decide to maybe divide by zero something, plus Field of Ruin if they, let's say, attack with Faceless Haven. So their opponent moves to combats. Even if they have another Brutal Cathar, they won't be able to necessarily kill it, but our opponent has a Fateful Absence, fair enough. So, not a card you see very often in Mono White these days, but that's going to be effective. And then we'll take 8, and that happens. So we're down to 3. So I don't really want to Devastating Mastery, because I would also destroy the clue token. So I guess Doomscar for now. And then keep up my author interaction. Possible I could have gotten away with playing a tapped lands. We've got Field of Ruin for Faceless Haven, and Faithful Mending can gain more life. Another Adversary. That works. And then... Can crack the clue for starters. And given that we drew another Field of Ruin, I can deal with the Haven now. Alright, so is it time for Devastating Mastery and keep up Field of Ruin? Seems okay. Another Brutal Cathar resolves. And another Adversary. So that one I won't be able to Disruption. Can divide by zero it, but might as well do that next turn. And then for now deal with the Haven. Alrighty, so how much mana are we working with? I could flashback Deluge and have four mana left potentially. That would keep me alive given the Divide by Zero. Could also Divide by Zero now and get a Mascot Exhibition, but I don't really want to bounce any of the opponent's creatures necessarily. So I guess I don't hate Deluge to go digging and find a bunch of spot removal if we want it. Although it does give the opponent a token. Fading Hope is also kind of medium. Maybe I'll grab one Fateful Absence and a Hull. And then for now play a tapped hall. There's the risk I die to another adversary. 
but I don't think I can really avoid that. So, sure. And then I guess I could still divide by zero here on the adversary. Make them replay it and then Fateful Absence and get a Mascot Exhibition. Okay, Revelry, not bad. So I could start there, gain some life, make some tokens. And then I can Mascot, still keep up Fateful Absence, that seems acceptable. Just a land from the opponents. And then they're gonna let it go to Knight, transforming Brutal Cathar. Do I want that to happen? Not really, but it's also not gonna transform back anytime soon. So... That's okay by me. And this seems like a good opportunity to play Kicked Skyclave Relic. Make a bunch of extra mana. The Flyer can start attacking. Still have our Hall of the Storm Giants as well, so... Not really in any danger. And then now, if Deluge can find our Sinner's Judgment, I'll happily take it. So, it was a bit scary at the start with the Thalia, Elite Spellbinder, and Double Faceless Haven. Their Fateful Absence also got in a little bit of extra damage, but... Blue-White Control has taken over the game, I would say. As our opponent attacks for 5, maybe... And I get to flashback Deluge, finding our win condition and another Deluge. And we even found an author judge. So I can flashback Mending to discards, maybe even both. And then, is it safe to cast this for 7? Seems like it. Chant our opponents. And then we just need to hold out for a couple more turns. So probably no point in attacking with the Inkling anymore. Elite Spellbinder gonna have a look. Sure. Can still cast Absence for 4 mana. I'm also fine resetting the board with Doomscar now. As Deluge can find more interaction. Like a couple bounce spells. Now at this point we could also just win with our creature lands, it's not like we need our uh, Sinner's Judgment to win the game, but it is a fun win condition. Alright, opponent's gonna kill their own Spellbinder for a clue token, sure. So our opponent's fighting the good fight. And... Probably fine to pass. A Luminarc Aspirant to play. That works. So now I can Sunset Ravelry, making a few tokens. Flashback Deluge, not that we really need it, but grab a Field of Ruin here. So I need to survive one more turn. And that should do it. Thalia. 
we've gone full circle. Thalia showed up at the start, and now at the end of the game. Probably could have just blocked with all of the Storm Giants too, but doesn't really matter here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Being on the play makes it more likely that Ravelry actually draws a card. Turn 1, Snow-Covered Plains. Is this mono-white aggro? Uh, looks like it. Alright. So... Hang on to our Sunset Ravelry, which can maybe get the full three modes next turn. Alright, probably not if they have a couple more one drops. So, I might want to kill the Monk of the Open Hand, which otherwise threatens to grow both initiates next turn. And then we'll Ravelry still. Wouldn't get to draw a card, so it only makes two one ones and gains four. Yeah, probably still fine. Just trying to buy time until we can mastery, which hopefully also deals with the opponent's clue token. And then I would be happy to double block an initiate. Alright, Aspirin's quite good since that's gonna grow one of the initiates and train the other. So, I'll take four. And then maybe next turn I'll chump another Ravelry. Could always cast the mastery as sort of a reset button, but I don't think we're that desperate. We'll try and hold out until we can actually cast it for six. So, yeah, I guess it's fine to chump? Do I want a double chump already? That might be a little aggressive. Welcoming vampire could be annoying. So really need a land here, but not necessarily guaranteed to draw one. But for now we'll make some more tokens, gain some more life. And then hopefully next turn reset the board. Brutal Cathar can XL one of my tokens, draw a card. And their opponent's gonna keep trading the initiates. And then now I'm tempted to double chump. Alright, they're gonna grow the Aspirant itself. Fair enough. Do I want to double block Aspirants? I don't think so. Right, did not find the lane, sadly, but I can relic into Revelry. Which sets up Mastery for next turn if they don't play Thalia. But they will get to draw more with a Welcoming Vampire, maybe even crack the clue. So the second Devastating Mastery is going to be quite important. Second Welcoming Vampire. Okay. And an Usher. Their opponent still has four cards in hand, but we'll be able to reset the boards and we'll still be at a healthy life total. So, we've got a chance. Deluge to find more action. We get to keep our Skyclave Relic. So time for the opponent to rebuild. Field of Ruin deals with Faceless Haven. And there's Thalia. Ok, 
Okay, so I could mass tree once again. Don't mind taking a bit of a hit. Maybe use Field of Rune on Haven this turn cycle and cast Deluge. And see what else we pick up. Could have main phase Deluge for brutal Cathar purposes, but Luminarch's fine. And we'll see if they want to commit something else, another Luminarch. Alright, so we'll take 7, can Field of Ruin their Haven, cast Deluge, and then next turn Mastery cleans up everything, so we should be in good shape. Finding Fading Hope and a land, probably. And then I could also Doomscar instead of Mastery, but... I guess we can be mana efficient with Mastery, since there's no non-creature permanence I need to deal with. Probably wanted to keep a blue mana here. Alright, back up Faceless Save and Ambrutal Cathar. So, we've got Absence to deal with Haven, and then, yeah, don't really want a Deluge right now, so I'll foretell Doomscar. Don't necessarily want to let it transform to Knight, because then we're taking a bit of extra damage. So I could just bounce the Brutal Cathar. And we also get to Scry. Divide by zero seems like a fine draw. And then we'll see if they want to attack with their creature land. Wait for it to actually go to combat so they can't use the mana in their main phase. So sure the opponent gets a clue token but we're more than making up for that card advantage with cards like Memory Deluge, which is why it's not a disaster. Alright, not sure. Could Fateful Absence that as well, or I can take the hit and next turn Doomscar. Although they might not overcommit. I'll take my draw step. And then... Now I could Deluge, hit a land drop, still have Fateful Absence available. Also keeps it daytime for what it's worth. And then I guess we can take Fading Hope Divide by Zero. Even though I would like to keep hitting my land drops, could also go for a Skyclave Relic to play it kicked. So a couple options. But I'll go with a Divide by Zero. And then I can bounce the Usher of the Fallen with Fading Hope before it gets to attack. And if they replay everything, we can Doomscar. And I'll take a land. So at this point, looking for more copies of Memory Deluge. And we would take our Sinner's Judgment as well. Opponent repopulates with Usher and Monk. And they're deciding if they want to add anything else to the board. They don't. So I could divide by zero. Get Mascot Exhibition, although we're one mana short of casting the Mascot Exhibition. Could Doomscar. I think it's fine to just Doomscar here. And then divide their next play. Get the Mascot Exhibition, which could also help us close out the game. Opponent goes for Monk into Brutal Cathar. Nope, Thalia. I guess that's fine. And then we can bounce Thalia end of turn. So uh, they wouldn't be able to replay it. Could also go for Teachings. 
But uh, mascot exhibition buys quite a bit of time. I guess the one drawback is that the Brutal Cathar can exile a token. So maybe teachings is still better. Assuming I can empty my hand enough, which with another divide by zero and a land, I might be able to. Sure. Alright, so I can bounce the monk. And then, do I want another teaching, or now get mascot exhibition? Probably go for mascot exhibition now, and then teachings will draw two. Alright. So, pretty efficient turn. Now, of course, what we could do is Fateful Absence in response to Brutal Cathar to prevent our opponent from exiling anything. So that's probably what I want to set up, but Hall of the Storm Giants is an excellent pickup as well. So we'll wipe the board. And then next turn I can play Exhibition, keep up Fateful Absence, but our opponent has seen enough. So no Sinner's Judgment win this time. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Not sure yet if disruption's gonna be a land or a spell, as we're up against mono white aggro once again. Given that I drew islands, I can probably afford to keep disruption as a counter spell. So revelry, decent answer to an early usher of the fallen if it's not followed by the uh, luminar aspirants. And hopefully no Thalia early. Some Gold Sentinel is manageable. Alright, so we'll pass with Disruption and Fateful Absence up to maybe counter an Elite Spellbinder. And then Revelry will need to buy a bit of time here. Right, opponent is just going to boast. In that case, I could Absence the Sentinel, which also buys quite a bit of time. They might have wanted to wait until after damage to give me less information to work with. And then we'll keep up Field of Rune here. And then next turn I might pull the trigger on Revelry. Right, opponent's gonna force the issue here on the Haven, since they have a backup. And another Usher. So it's going to be a very effective Revelry. Although they could have something like an Adversary to pump the team. Portable Hole, I guess, can deal with one of the tokens. And then we could see Haven attack as well. Jory Disruption not looking great at the moment. I think I still trade for an Usher, since we don't have a Sweeper in hand. Divide by zero is useful. So, ideally we can Deluge, try and find some more answers. Since Divide by zero cannot bounce the Haven. So... This is 7 coming our way. If I deluge, then even if I wipe the board, I would still be dead to Faceless Haven. So I really need another Sunset Ravelry, for instance. Yeah, I mean, so be it. I don't think Divide by Zero is going to be good enough, otherwise we bounce Usher, take 5, they replay Usher. What do I even learn for? It's not like I can already cast Mask on Exhibition. So, I'll take it.
opponent's gonna boost. There's a revelry, and then could take Fading Hope and bounce Haven right now, which buys me a lot of time. Kind of like that idea. And then another Deluge. I guess I can Deluge and Revelry in the same turn. Yeah. And try and find another Field of Ruin. Opponents didn't play Faceless Haven, that's surprising. Attacks. Make some trades. That's fine. And an elite spellbinder will deluge in response, or I can divide by zero it. Which is also a good use of my mana. And then now I could get Mascot Exhibition. And cast it to stabilize the ground. And then the judge can deal with the spellbinder. Alright, that's not too bad. Familiar picks up a counter. They still have a clue token they can sacrifice, but the board is pretty stable right now. And a Doomscar is always good. So how do we feel about main phase, deluge, and then maybe foretell Doomscar? Because I would like to hit my land drops. Alright, Field of Rune's good, and I guess we'll take a second. And then do I want to hang on to Field of Ruin? Yeah, I guess that's fine. As opposed to Foretelling here. And then the Inkling can trade for Spellbinder right now, should they attack. But the uh, Judge can also block it if they have like a Brutal Cathar for the Inkling, or the 4-4 token maybe. Yeah, Jewelry Disruption is not going to be too useful now that they know about it. I cannot imagine playing Blue-White Control without four copies of Field of Rune, with Faceless Haven everywhere. Another Stonebinder resolves. So they can play another 3 drop. So if I can, I would like to flashback Deluge. And that still leaves enough mana to foretell Doomscar. Thalia is going to force the issue right now. And then find a Divide by Zero. Another Doomscar, I guess. Even though I would like more lands too. That grows a Familiars because of the uh, Deluge getting exiled, so... A bit of a nombo here, but... Probably going to reset the board here in a second. So, I guess we'll get in for two, but Pun probably knows what's incoming. And then I might want to cast the expensive Doom Scarf that leaves up enough mana for a four mana Deluge. It does not. Would leave enough mana for Divide by Zero. I guess that's good enough. And then I can play this as a tap land and pass.
opponent's got an usher. And that's it. Do I want to bounce it? Sure. And then maybe get another Maxcon exhibition. Could also get environmental sciences. We have our Sinner's Judgment if the judge eventually dies. So we have our win condition. So it's mostly about stabilizing the ground, I guess. So we'll play this. Can still cast a 4 mana Deluge. Skyclave Apparition to exile my judge. Alright, I guess we'll uh, use Absence and then I can still feel the Varun. Okay, so time to play our win condition now. Do I want to wipe the board here as well? Still have a Hall of the Storm Giants as well. So we're in a good spot. But I guess we'll just reset the board to play it safe. And then I think we have the tools to survive a couple turns. Sentinel's not bad, Exile's Deluge. Also would have been able to exile our judge, so glad we disturbed it right away. But uh don't think the Sentinel's gonna be attacking too much anymore. Spellbinder to have a look. I guess I deluge in response then. Finding another Deluge and another Judge. Opponent's pretty far from having Coven enabled. And our creatures have lots of different colors, so the color protection here is not really gonna be too useful. Counter up to two. And Embarrassment of Riches here. We'll just pass it back. And there we go. Another win for Sinner's Judgment. Another Mono White Anger deck defeated. So, yeah, overall. Didn't get to see a whole lot of variety in our matchups, but I guess Mono White is just the most popular deck in standard best of one at the moment, so you're gonna face it quite a bit. So, being able to beat it with Blue White Control is very important. Now, when it comes to some other popular matchups, like the Blue Red Epiphany matchup, that one can be a little bit rough if the opponent can combo off in one big turn and just take like three, four extra turns and kill you with birds before you get a chance to untap and cast your sweeper. Although a card like Divide by Zero certainly helps with mitigating how many extra turns the opponent can take, but our deck is certainly geared towards beating the creature decks like Mono White, Mono Green, and uh, probably a little bit better against Mono White than Mono Green, I would say, because our 1 1 tokens from Sunset Revelry usually buy more time against the White deck as opposed to Green, which might have some big trampling creatures. But uh, nonetheless, Sweepers plus an effect like Devastating Mastery is quite good against the Green deck as well, being able to deal with Chariots and maybe a Run and Seven. So all those matchups are quite similar in how they play out, as we usually just try to stabilize and eventually take over thanks to all the extra card advantage from Memory Deluge. And then when it comes to some of the snow control matchups, those are usually fine as well, since the opponent doesn't have much in terms of uh, targeted discard for our hand, or ways to really deal with the Sinner's Judgment once it's in play, and they don't really apply a lot of pressure early, so they play into our control game plan, which we're comfortable with. So the worst matchup for the deck is probably opposing blue decks with access to counter spells or creatures like Hullbreaker Horror that are very good at uh, bouncing back expensive spells and permanents that we might want to play. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.